Uh, so in the previous class we talked about the ceramic eh? so this is the classification of the ceramic based on what we call application you have eight sort of like application either as a glass clay product refractories abrasive ceramic biomaterial carbon and advanced material so uh, for the what we call for the glass you have under that you have glass and the glass ceramic eh? and then clay product we have structural clay product and whiteware uh, and so on. So we have a uh, study in the last class about this glass, especially for the glass here and glass ceramic. Okay, uh, we will not cover everything, but um, we will focus a few lah. For example, glass we have done most of it. We will continue a little bit about glass, and then we may focus on clay product. And then, is it? Eh? I don't need. I need to write on the board. Yeah, first time I have slide. Anyway. So we also will cover a little bit about abrasive and yeah, that's it only. The rest, if I want to cover it, it will take more time lah. So that's the only slide you will have throughout this course. Okay, so now, talking about glass. Huh? The glass is made from what? Glass is made from what? Quas. Not quas. Glass. Yeah, quas lah. The, the, the original. So you have two things. You have quas. And also you have glass. Quartz is basically made of silicon oxide, silicon dioxide. Okay, so this is what you find in the sand, whatever lah. And if you have like a, a big a quartz, you have a crystal lah, quartz crystal. So uh, and then this thing, the difference between this and this is that this is a crystalline, crystalline, and glass is basically a non crystal the lean or the other word for that is what the other word for non crystalline is what amorphous eh? amorphous okay so you can turn the quartz into glass by firing it at very high temperature around 1200 celsius so you can fire it up you can fire it up eh, fire is red you can fire it up uh, Typically around 1 to 0, 0 Celsius like that. So you get the glass. Uh, the reason why the glass become amorphous is cannot go back to crystalline. So this like one way only. If you have ice, for example, the water, eh, you have ice and then you go to water, you go to water, this thing can what we call, you can go to water and the water can also go to the ice again when you freeze it. So meaning that this this chemistry here, meaning that it's reversible here. This is reversible chemistry. You can get back the ice, the structure, the crystal structure of the ice. But for the glass, it's not, it's different lah. Because the, this thing, because the silicon the outside, when you fire it, it doesn't remember the position at the beginning when you cool it down. So you left with the non-crystalline amorphous uh, structure lah. So you get something like a liquid, but solid. Yeah, in the molecular structure, it's a liquid, but at macro scale, it's a solid. So that is glass. Um, so, because of this, this amorphous, uh, what we call this amorphous, uh, proper amorphous structure of the molecule inside the glass, the glass, let's say I have this, what we call the glass light, the normal glass light, it has what we call isotropic. Uh, properties, isotropic properties meaning that it it has same properties throughout throughout the what we call throughout the glass itself. If you try to break this, if you try to break this, take whatever knife or whatever, it will sort of like they don't have preferred preferred apa? fracture point. If you have wood, let's say you have that wood, eh, that wood. Normally the wood, let's say this is wood, let's say this is wood. The wood normally you see what you see grain right. This is like uh, the 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 grain boundaries something like that. So same like this lah. Same like this. If you look closely, if you look closely you cannot look lah. But you believe me lah. If you look closely you have something like this. So meaning that if you have this, the we call this uh, an isotropic, an isotropic properties lah. Pro, uh, properties are properties meaning that this grain is basically uh, 
you can cleave this thing along the grain easily mean that you can crack this along this grain easily lah okay this thing you can crack this thing much easily than you crack vertically i mean you can crack like this much easily lah uh, like that you can see when i crack like that this thing when i crack like this you can see that is uh, sharp and very long like that lah i mean have sort of like directional but if i try to break like this you can see they are like apa nak apa term dia it's not brittle it's just they are snap just like that but if you snap uh, in other way you get a like clean clean snap lah because the snap happen along the boundary okay so that is for wood something that have a uh, uh, and isotropic properties you can cleave it easily uh, along the grain lah along the grain but for isotop isotropic uh, structure there are no preferred orientation i mean that the molecule inside the glass there are no preferred orientation inside this no preferred orientation so mean that if i have a like glass like i try to break it then it just shatter it just splinter like that Okay, so I have glass light. I have glass light. So like this, glass light. Oh, you cannot see. Farah ni Farah. Ni Farah kan? Lain lah Farah. Farah, dah datang sampai? You jadi tripod saya. Uh, so, sebab you tak nampak belakang. Korang tak nampak. So, saya kena lepas macam ni. Okay, macam biasalah. You buka. You pernah buat kan ni tu? Okay. So, basically... Um, I have this, uh, what we call this uh, glass light. The glass light is made of... Uh, so this glass light is basically isotropic. This is soda lime glass. Huh? But it's also true for if you use pyrite or whatever. The mechanical properties, even though it's durable in terms of uh, uh, what we call, uh, can resist uh, high heat or what we call, can resist high heat or less... Uh, stronger than this but if you try to fracture pyrite or this soda lime it's same thing lah it will fracture just like that you can see lah eh ni siapa you punya you punya no oh buang dia buang dia I don't know okay so eh apa eh eh jatuh pula rasak macam ni okay up cak so if let's say that Break, it will shatter. It's not shatter, right? Okay. Eh? Let's say I take camera, camera, camera. Okay, camera, camera. Where's camera? Ha. Okay, macam biasa. Oh, patutlah kat sini. Ha, tu dia. Okay, macam biasa. Eh? So, for example, this thing. Okay, this thing, for example, that thing, if I just crack like that, it will like shatter like that lah. So that shattering because it doesn't have what we call specific orientation. If I use this, ah, now you can see lah. Ah, now it's easy lah, you can see. Ah, you cannot really see lah. But anyway, you can see it's uh, like well, along the green lah. So in order, you stay. Eh? So in order to sort of like to try to cut the glass, you need to create, in order to cut it cleanly, in two, you need to create sort of like a den. So you need, to, in order to cut it, you need, if you want to cut it like perfectly, you need to create a den, sort of like preferred orientation. For example, if you want to cut here, you need to make a den here. So you are sort of like, if you see this from the side, you sort of like create a den like that lah. So you creating a preferred, right? Orientation lah, in term of then lah, creating preferred orientation, orientation, creating preferred. What is I write here? Prefer, preferred, prefer R, preferred. Then lah, along the intended axis lah. Okay, so normally in order to cut the glass, glass is hard. Glass by itself is hard. So, in order to cut it, you need to find something harder than this. Normally, you have a glass cutter. Eh? Glass cutter, uh, something like this. 
something like this. So this is glass cutter. The tips for the glass cutter is made from the what we call tungsten carbide. Later I will uh, explain a little bit. Uh, so you need to use a glass cutter to make this glass cutter, glass cutter to make this thing. So for example, let's say I want to cut this glass, eh, to cut this glass along because this is maybe easy lah. So if I want to cut like this, eh, so I want uh, you lah buat. See, you pegang lah, you buat. So basically, um, what Farah will do is basically it will cut this through this thing. This thing will not cut the glass. It will just create a dent. Okay? It will create the dent only. So basically, what Farah will do is that it will try to scratch this glass along this uh, exit lah. This what we call this uh, horizontal, not horizontal, vertical exit like that. Okay? So and then we will see whether we can cut it cleanly or not. So Farah did that. Let me open it. Ah, buatlah macam mana. Ah, tak kasih, tak kasih ni. Okay. Kau masukkan dulu. Because if I do it myself, then uh, you might say that uh, this is you already tested before. No, just basically what Farah need to do is just crash. Don't need to be like uh, uh, what you call. You just crash only. You just crash, just crash and do Okay, again, 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 at the same place. Oh, let me, okay, let me make it. Okay, so basically, you need just only scratch. Okay. Okay, done. Okay, it's okay. So try to crack. Try to, for example, try to break like that. Ah, try. Do we shut it or not? <laughs> let me see. Okay. So uh, you can see the the what you call you can see sort of like the crack, but it's not uh, deep enough lah, deep enough. But you can add a, add more, add more crack. The same place ah. Okay, more. Okay, more. So you don't need until it break like that. Okay. So try to, to what you call, to put here and then to break like that. Tak jawab ni. Macam ni, yang pegang, pegang lah. Let me try to break this thing. Okay. Oh, the reason for this is because if you look here, tak nampak lah, susah lah. Nak senang, nak mengajar, saya minum. Uh, you see that? So there are some crack, but they are like multiple crack there. Can you see that? Oh, going going. Nih, you can see that they are multiple crack. They are not multiple crack. Mean that the the line is not one. It's just like uh, the what you call? Siapa nama? Farah try to do here and there, here and there. So if you want to do it correctly, you need to do it just in one place. For example, like this. So this is the thing, and then you just go there, and then you just. Like that, I cannot see also. <laughs> okay. Because it just... Okay, so you can see they are like one uh, line of what we call the thing. And then you can just keep up there. Okay, so you can keep up like that. So you don't need to like, to to do it in such a way that it need to be like broken during a during, uh, process. It just create a den like that, eh? a den like that. So, for example, if I create like this, no, because Farah already do this. Okay, so you get something. Uh, what we call now, what you did is basically you create a preferred uh, den mark along the edges that you want to break lah. So it much easy to break the thing. So this is what we call the crack propagation. Okay, so thank you, Farah. So you can put there lah. So basically, the idea is that. When you make a crack from the side, huh? it's like this. You crack, you you do this what we call the hard uh, cutter. It will create the crack, and over time, it will become bigger and bigger like that. It become bigger and bigger like that. So, so when you try to apply the load here, it become bigger and bigger, and eventually it will crack into two. So that is basically what we call crack propagation. Huh? Propagation. So the one, the act that I'm doing just now, the Farah did just now, what we, they call it scoring. Eh? 
the one that we did just now, they call it sc scoring. It's not cutting, it's just scoring, scratching the, uh, the, the surface. So you can, uh, by scoring, you create this uh, head for propagation. We call it head of head for crack propagation, propagation. And then when you apply load on the either side, this you sort of like you propagate, you start to propagate the, the, the crack uh, until the end. Lah. So that's how you cut the glass. Huh? So you don't cut the glass using scissor or whatever or saw because if you use saw, it will break. Okay? If you go at home and then you have your glass mark and then you want to cut into, into half, if you use saw, the normal saw, then it will break. Lah. It will break, it will shatter. Lah. Because of this isotopic properties, you need to create a den first, and then you get the what we call the the the, the sharp or the clean cut like that. So that's what we call uh, scoring. Yeah. Okay. So this you can pass along. So this the tip of this is basically made from the tungsten carbide. Yeah? The tip for that glass cutter. Let me put here glass cutter here. This. Normally, they make the tips. You can see the roller tip there. It's not sharp. If you just touch it, don't worry. It's, it will not make your apa ni? Apa ni? finger. Apa? Luka apa luka? Bleed. Not bleed. Finger. Apa ada term dia? You, need, you will not cut your finger lah. You, need, you will not cut your finger. Because it's not sharp if you if you try to touch that thing it's not sharp but it's hard it's different eh? it's not sharp as the knife but it's it's what we call it's hard okay you don't need something very sharp in order to cut the glass you need something hard okay so this normally is made from the tungsten carbide tungsten carbide the one that you will feel that is tungsten carbide that's very hard uh, some glass cutter they use diamond, eh? diamond, because diamond uh, we know is a uh, hardest one of the hardest uh, natural material on earth, lah. Okay, so let's talk about the hardness first, eh? because we are going to the hardness part. Hardness part. Let me change this thing to. Oh, you can see me. Okay, so so we are here, but now suddenly we want to go here, abrasive. Okay, because one of the properties of the ceramic is hard. Okay, so hard allow you to cut, allow you what we call to cut uh, something that is softer than that lah. So the hardness part lah. Eh. Okay, hardness is one of the characteristic of the ceramic. Eh? So the early people. When they want to see whether something is harder than other stuff, normally they use natural uh, stone, natural gem, gem stone. Natural stone lah, natural stone. Because long time ago, they don't have like uh, equipment to measure the hardness. They use the stones to what we call, to, to, to sort of like make an index. Which one is the hardest? Which one is the uh, less hardest? So they have something what we call moh scale. Eh? Moh scale. Moh scale, meaning that uh, people try to rank which stone, which natural stone from the, what we call, from the less hard to the most hardest lah. The hardest one, they put the scale 1 to 10. The hardest one is diamond lah. Diamond. And then after diamond, <coughs> number 9 is corundrum. 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 Corundrum is basically a, a family of a stone uh, that is uh, have ruby or sapphire. Sapphire. Ruby. What color is ruby? Red. Uh, so you know ruby, right? You know ruby. Okay. So ruby is red, and anything other than red, they call it sapphire. Although sapphire, we are normally associated with the blue. Okay. But sapphire is basically anything other than red uh, under this family, uh, current room. So this is also hard, but it's less hard than diamond. On the eighth scale, on the eighth uh, rank, I mean that this is uh, become less less harder, you have uh, what we call uh, apat, 
No, apatid. We have... We have what? Eh? We have topaz. Okay, topaz. Topaz is basically the... Eh, it's a gemstone that normally in orange in color. But of course, it can have any color but topaz. Eh? And then the, uh, the seven is quas, the one that I show you. Eh? Quas, the sand lah. Quas. Quas. And then six, you have uh, auto, auto clays. Clays are benda lah nama dia. And then you have uh, number five. You have appetite, appetite, and then you have number four. You have uh, fluorite, fluorite, and then number three you have calcite, and then number two you have gypsum, gypsum, and then you have number one. What is the less hard mineral that you know? Carbon is hard. Carbon is a bit diamond. Carbon that is graphite lah, but. Uh, mineral, mineral. Carbon is is element. Mineral is something because remember, long time ago, people don't know this is carbon or not. Early civilization doesn't know what is. They see the diamond, but they don't know inside that they are what or what. So they are de devising a scale based on what they can see. And normally, what they can see is a gemstone that they found uh, in nature, lah. So the less hardest one is talcum. It's basically the baby powder lah, baby powder, eh? baby powder. That is the the mineral that is uh, what we call that is uh, soft, huh? baby talcum lah. So let me open this thing so that you can see what I say. So let me put there, and then that so uh, you know. Ruby, you know, Kuas, you know, Autoclase, whatever the name is that. Autoclase. Uh, so, it's just a stone lah. It's just a stone lah. No need to know a detail about that. But just to know, so the topaz, just to give you the idea lah. The topaz is like that. So, normally in, it can be have any colour lah. Any colour. So, this topaz normally is associated with the orange. And then, uh, the sapphire. Sapphire so normally associated with the blue, but it can be anything other than blue. Eh? Other than blue, so this sapphire, this uh, heart, and ruby. You know, uh, ruby. So you know ruby there, okay. And then you have what else? So at least you get the idea lah. And then apatite, apatite is basically the thing. So that is apatite, okay. And then you have fluorite, fluorite. Florid. Uh, you have florid like this somehow, like this color, whatever, the color, the thing. Okay, calcite. Calcite normally found in the limestone, whatever. So you see like this, calcite. Okay, so this calcite. And then gypsum. Gypsum. So that thing, this, this is what we call a gypsum panel. Lah. This thing, gypsum panel. So they have this part. Okay, they have this thing. This thing. No, this is a brick lah, but that uh, top is a gypsum panel lah. If you put panel, so you get something that. So you have gypsum inside that. Okay, so the, the shilling, they use the gypsum panel. The one that you can uh, move around is, they call it a gypsum panel lah. And then lastly, you have talc. Okay, baby talc. So talcum for normally used for what you call a baby powder. So you can see how soft is it lah. So that is basically the mineral, the classification of mineral under the most scale. So when people said uh, what we call how hard is this, meaning that it's mostly a diamond. Lah. So the idea of hardness is like, uh, it's basically hardness itself. Hardness, huh? hardness, what is hardness? The ability, the ability of material to resist, to resist plastic deformation deformation eh? plastic deformation okay uh, what is plastic deformation uh, normally uh, it's not when i say plastic deformation it doesn't mean plastic here eh? this is uh, the jargon 
the key, the term that we will use during uh, when we talk about mechanical characteristics later on. Plastic, when you deform, what will happen? If you have plastic like this, when you have plastic like this, this plastic, when you try to, uh, what we call, when you try to, try to pull it, what, what will happen is that the plastic will sort of something, something like this, right? It becomes something uh, layut. Layut apa dalam bahasa? Deform lah. It become like this. So this thing, when it become like this, normally it will not return back to the original, right? So that's what we call plastic deformation. When you try to pull, and it will not return to original. Okay? Rubber band, that is not plastic. Rubber band, if you have rubber band, for example, if you have something like this, and then you try to pull, to pull, and then you have, you get something longer, and then, and then after that, you get sim again. So let me draw uh, like this. So, okay. So this, when you try to pull and then it stretch and then it uh, return back, this is what we call elastic, eh? elastic deformation. Deformation. This is what we call. So that is what we call uh, plastic deformation. This, the top one, is plastic deforma deformation. Eh? So it doesn't return back to the original. So this plastic, this term plastic doesn't necessarily mean plastic. They just use the term because normally people associate this with the plastic. If you look about, uh, if you see the, what you call, the metal, eh, when you have paper clip, you have this plastic deformation. Okay? So that's also the metal have plastic deformation. The elastic, something that it can return back. Lah. So the, what we call the hardness is the ability of material to resist plastic deformation. If I have this uh, marker pen, if I try to push it so hard, uh, this will bend. Okay? So when this is bent, meaning that this whiteboard is less harder than this pen. So that's what does it mean. Lah. So there's more scale. Lah. Okay? So here you can see the, 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 what we call the, the hardest material is what we call diamond. But diamond, this is what we call naturally occurring mineral. Okay? They are synthetic one that is uh, more harder than diamond. Lah. But in terms of natural natural Mineral, natural mineral, they are thing that is harder than diamond. Eh? They are thing that is harder than diamond. Oi, benda. What is stock? Oh, stock lah. What is stock? Okay, so they are thing that is uh, higher than diamond. So, some they call it Lonsdale. Lonsdale? Lonsdale. Lonsdale, Lonsdale, apa nama dia? Saya pun tak ingat dah. Lonsdale. Lonsdale, Lonsdale. So this this is basically a lon dale. Is it correct? Eh, hey, ini apa? Lonsdale diamond. Let me see. Ha ah, ni, Lonsdale. Uh, lost the diamond. Uh, uh, lost the lead. Ah, uh, lost the lead. Lost the lead. Lost the lead. Diamond. It's basically a diamond because this diamond, they, in the structure, uh, the, the what we call, the structure uh, for the diamond is tetrahedral. You can see something like something like this, but a little bit different lah. For diamond, it's different. So the, both are diamond, but this is what we call. The diamond that is uh, made when the meteor, you see the meteor from the out, this is your earth. If this meteor have a lot of carbon, because diamond is made of carbon, this meteor hit the earth, and then when it's hit, it will create a lot of uh, stress and um, immense heat is generated. So during that process, this what we call the, the carbon inside the meteor turn into the lost delete. So it's basically a diamond, but have a structure inside a little bit different. We call this another name is hexagonal diamond. Hexagonal diamond, eh? diamond. Why people call this? Because the, the structure inside is a little bit different here. 
the way how carbon atom because diamond is made of carbon so the way how carbon atom arranged in the what you call in the space is a little bit different the pattern itself a little bit different than normal diamond eh? normal diamond is cubic uh, this long slit is hexagonal diamond lah the, the the what you call the 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 pattern the crystal is uh, arranged in hexagonal uh, pattern lah hexagonal like this okay in 3 that's in 3d eh? okay so that's is uh, what called that's harder than diamond lah um you can also have boronitrate boronitrate also uh, harder than diamond uh, boronitrate boronitrate so normally they call it woods wood zip wood zip wood zip boronitrate wood zip boronitrate is this just a mineral lah it's not synthetic eh? wood wood zip wood zip a boronitrate just to tell you that there are things that is harder than diamond lah for example this thing lost the lead uh, even though it's diamond but they are different class that normal diamond this normal diamond eh, it is like 50% harder than diamond eh? harder than normal diamond normal diamond okay so that is a uh, hardness eh? so um, so because diamond is hard people uh, use it to uh, in industry to what we call to cut and so on for example to cut the diamond you see a diamond in order to cut a diamond into this into this uh, what you call this uh, uh, stone you need to use diamond to cut this diamond they use diamond to cut diamond because nothing harder than diamond lah, uh, in in this lah, in this in this kind lah. so they use diamond to cut the diamond even though you see in a gemstone factory they use like a saw that saw is basically the coat with the diamond so for example let's say do i have this thing uh, this thing so for example let's say this is a diamond saw diamond saw it's not made of diamond but they just put a diamond uh, around this thing okay so this is used to cut glass huh? because you cannot use to make hole on glass if you use a normal cutter using uh, because normal cutter normal saw they use what they use um, pass around uh, the normal cutter they use what we call for example this cutter normal cutter or whatever they use hardened hardened steel eh? hardened steel but this steel is not as hard as the diamond so normally if you want to cut something that is harder for example this tile eh? this tile if let's say i want to cut this tile into half i cannot use a normal uh, saw i need to use i need to use what i need to use diamond saw diamond saw so that is diamond saw that you want to see eh? of course this diamond is not the natural diamond lah natural diamond you use uh, sister use it for the what we call jewelry but this diamond they make it artificially it's a synthetic diamond eh? synthetic diamond this is synthetic diamond so what you see just now that thing that's shiny shiny bit is a synthetic diamond eh? synthetic diamond is as hard as a real diamond lah diamond okay so that is basically uh, how people use diamond to cut something because of its abrasiveness eh? so let me open this thing where is the thing okay so under the abrasive people normally use diamond eh? the diamond but uh, but that diamond usually reserve if you want to cut very hard material but if you want to sort of like uh, do a cut the normal material like a metal then you use hardened steel lah. hardened steel hardened steel okay so let me uh, use here because we are still empty here okay so let me use here okay now so diamond is we can say it under the ceramic lah. so uh, other thing under the abrasive uh, under the abrasive part the hard part is sand lah because you see the quartz is basically the sand so that's why people make a sand paper sand paper sand paper sand paper is simply a paper and then you have a sand glue on it okay 
So you have this uh, sandpaper here, the sandpaper. So it's glued on the paper. This red one, there are another one called emery pepper, eh? emery close. The emery close. It's like sandpaper, but the it use it use corundrum. Corundrum. It's corundrum. Sandpaper. Sandpaper. As the name imply, they use sand lah, sand glued on the paper. Elmi clothes, as the name imply, they put the corundrum on the clothes eh, on the clothes. If you look here, so you can pass around. This is emery, so this is sandpaper. So both are abrasive, eh? both are abrasive. Normally, the emery clothes here is uh, stronger than the sandpaper because remember, it's just corundrum. Corundrum is uh, stronger than the, uh, not harder than the quartz. So, and also they put on clothes. So that's why you have this, what we call the sanding uh, thing. You have a clothes. You have clothes, eh? you have clothes. So when you put clothes, it's much more durable lah, compared when you put uh, uh, paper only because paper get wet when you get wet with water because sometimes when you try to grind, it create a lot of heat. So you need to add water. Like when you try to sharpen your knife, you add water, right? Because when you try to grind, it creates a lot of heat. So this emery close, the deep implied close, allow you to do something like that. Lah. Okay? So this is used for sanding this thing. Sanding whatever. Hey, what's up? Bang, bang. Okay, sanding this thing. So that shows that the cordon drum is harder than the typical, yelah, typical wood and also if I do that this it also will this mine is okay so it will stretch sometimes you see and this uh, the, the what we call the idea of heart is important when you see something like this uh, when you see something uh, when you see something uh, let's say I put brass uh, brush Have you ever seen something like this in your life? Something like this? Again. So you might wonder why people use this thing? Why not use something that is soft? Because if you use this, your whatever you try to sort of like to scratch, to, to scrub, will get scratched. Okay? The purpose of people use this, even though it's hard, but this metal, this they use brass, huh? this metal. It's relatively soft. Brass is relatively soft. We learned before brass is basically a combination of uh, brass. Brass apa? Copper and copper and zinc, I think. Copper and zinc. Bronze is copper and tin. So uh, you can check back lah. So people use this in order to sort of like to scrub the the metal like uh, stainless steel. Stainless steel is much more what you call harder than the brass. So if you take this thing and you try to do on your what we call you, you try to scrap on what we call on your stainless steel, the stainless steel will not scratch. So the ability to scratch something means that that thing is harder. So normally the the test is like this. For example, if I have this thing, if I have a material, if I try to do it like this, if I have a scratch, mean that this is more harder than this lah. If I can do something. Touch my nail and uh, scratch the what I call the wood, and the wood is scratched. Here is scratched, meaning that my nail is harder than the wood. Okay. For this, for what I call for metal, I cannot because the metal is harder than my nail. So to test the hardness, typically people use the scratch test. Okay. Um, so that is a sandpaper. Okay, sandpaper. Uh, what we call the used for nila. For polish, eh? sandpaper, you have emery clothes. And also, uh, under the abrasive uh, ceramic, you can also have what we call something that uh, we call it diamond paste. Eh? Diamond paste. You see, the one that I passed, uh, uh, what we call pass, is basically the diamond coated on the tool, on the disc or whatever. So you can also have a diamond paste. Eh? Diamond paste. I have diamond paste. Yeah, I have diamond paste. So this diamond paste, so you can pass through. So basically, this is a polymer. Uh, so you, uh, I pass you. 
I pass to you. So this polymer have is epoxy. Basically, there are two sides. One side is not polished. One side is polished. So this polish using uh, what we call the diamond paste. This is basically the paste. It's just a paste like a toothpaste, but have a diamond particle inside that. Okay, diamond particle inside that. So what people do is that they take the paste and then they just rub there. So you can see the different what it can does to the in the polishing lah. So this is a diamond paste. Inside this, there are diamond. So you can see on this diamond paste, there are numbers. Here there are 0 0.5. Here there are 10. Meaning that it can it can go to the rough 0 0.5 here. Meaning that 0 0.5 micron lah. Meaning that it can polish the surface to the point that the 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 roughness is below 0 0.5 micron. So you can pass along and you see the difference between unpolished one and the polished one. So this they use a diamond paste lah to pass through. So that is basically the diamond. So you can make the abrasive. So I put here lah. Abrasive. Abrasive. You can glue. You can glue it. You can make a paste. So let me put like this. Much easier lah. You can either glue it. You can make it glue. Glue it. You can paste it. You can make a paste. Paste. You can make a paste. Uh, diamond paste. Example diamond paste. Diamond paste. Or you can... Uh, the glue or this thing. The glue also is what uh, you see when... Not glue. I mean, they coat. You can coat it also. On the tool. Eh? Tool bit. Tool bit. Eh? Tool bit. The one that you see just now. The one that I passed to you. They have what we call the diamond... Uh, coat on the outside of the uh, rotating disc. Okay, so you can either coat, make a paste, not paste, make a paste, make a paste, or glue on the paper or the clothes. So you get this thing, uh, uh, the use of abrasive lah. They use abrasive in uh, what we call in manufacturing. So that's under abrasive. And normally, typically, the the material used for the abrasive is under the ceramic lah. Diamond sand is a ceramic, corn drum is a uh, ceramic, diamond also under the category of ceramic, and this also the diamond. Diamond is also under the ceramic. Eh? Okay, sometimes people don't use diamond. For example, when people want to cut, eh, want to cut something, uh, they use uh, as I said before, another popular uh, ceramic that used to cut because it's hard is tungsten carbide. Okay, uh, normally you will see um, something like lace insert, lace insert. Okay, so this thing, okay, this basically uh, what we call made from the tungsten carbide. So lace, L-A-T-H-E, is basically uh, the machine that rotate. For example, you want to make this, this, what uh, so in order to make this, in order to make this shape, typically they don't. This is like a solid brass or whatever. For example, this thing. Basically, how they cut this thing? They use the lathe. They rotate this thing. They put in the machine. That machine rotate, rotate very fast, and then they have that insert outside this thing, and then that insert will cut something, cut this thing lah. So I put lah lathe. Uh, I'm using YouTube lah senang. Let YouTube. Uh, so that's the thing. Watch. S go in front. So basically, this is the insert. is made from the uh, tungsten carbide, not diamond, because yeah, because this is not as hard as uh, needed. Eh? As hard as need diamond to cut it. So they normally. In industry, they use this. They use what we call the insert made from the tungsten carbide because tungsten carbide is one of the hardest uh, material. Lah. Uh, so this is where people can make something uh, like this. What we call this card and so on. So they use the, they use this thing. So this, tombol pintu. Eh. So this is basically the tungsten carbide. Anyway. So that is uh, the importance of hardness. You, you don't need something strong. You need something hard. Okay. 
because the metal itself is strong. So you need something that is harder than this metal to cut. So using lathe, lathe is a machine that move lah, move the thing, turning and so on. Okay, so that is the lathe. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's cut here. So we put here. So this is what uh, early people use, eh? index, but this is quite subjective. It's quite what we call, it's not, it's only qualitative. Just give a rough idea. Uh, in recent, in modern days, people don't use that. Okay, in modern days, people use uh, uh, tools, uh, the, 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 what we call, the machine that can measure it, uh, so that you can measure it, uh, and have a repeated uh, result lah. Mana? Okay. Okay, normally how people measure the hardness lah. Hardness test lah. Hardness test. Hardness test. So how people nowadays test the hardness of a material. So the first, the most common method, they use uh, what we call Rockwell method. Rockwell hardness test. Hardness test. Okay. Rockwell hardness test, what does, what, how it works is just they have something like a ball, sphere, or something like a cone, diamond, cone diamond, and then, like this, and then they press this thing into the material. For example, this is a sample. Eh? Sample. They press this down. They press this. For example, they press. Let's say I take this, uh, this thing, and then they press, and then... Uh, so the press, so you have this uh, minor, minor press, press, the initial press, and then next, what they did is that they press even deeper. So let's say they press even deeper, like that. The same thing, they press even deeper. So this is what we call major press, major press. So the difference between the height, the difference between the height will be converted into the scale, into the numbers lah. So that is Rockwell hardness test. So this is basically a, a cone, conical diamond lah, conical diamond. So if I put here, Rockwell, Rockwell, eh, Rockwell test. So do we have that thing? So that's the thing. Eh? So basically, they just dip a diamond cone to the specimen, and depending on the the depth, the difference between the what we call major uh, minor load and the major load, from that they convert into the numbers, and then they can see, can compare this material and other material lah. How deep the deeper they can go, meaning that the material is less hard lah. <coughs> so what is what is the conical? Conical diamond. Diamond. So you put, so you see they put a diamond, the conical diamond, diamond cone on the, uh, that thing you can see they put the diamond cone on the tip like that. So they either use for Rockwell, either they use the diamond or a ball steel, lah, a ball steel. And then the second, they normally use, people use, Brinell test, Brinell hardness test. Normally for the Brinell, they use something like a sphere, sphere like this. Same idea, they will sort of like, they try to push this thing to the sample, to the sample, but instead of looking at the depths, they're looking at the dent itself. So what they look, if I look it in the top view, top view, so view, you will see something, if this is like less harder than this, normally they use the ball, they use a very hard uh, steel lah, very hard steel. So under the top view, you will see a den, eh? you will see a den something after, you will see a den like that, you will see a den. So by measuring the surface area, surface area of this den or calculating the diameter of this den, they can sort of like uh, convert it into the scale, into the numbers. So this abrinal test, 
brain uh, test. So you can see, so they dip the sphere and then they calculate the area, the surface area that is made, that is in there. Lah. So they, they calculate the area for that. Lah. So it's a very simple test, lah, a very simple test. Um, and then if you have something very hard to test, typically people use uh, uh, apa nama dia tu? Uh, knup weakest weakest or knup 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 hardness test nama orang semua ni hardness test so the difference between this and this is that they use instead of using conical diamond they use pyramidal diamond diamond so you have something like this so ni nak lukis siapa tak tahu pyramidal lah pyramidal so it's not conical okay diamond so instead of using this they use a pyramidal diamond it's more sharper than this lah more sharper so and usually they use a very low um, force because it doesn't need to be like you you don't need to what we call to to push all this uh, what we call bit until the end you just need to give a, what we call specific force and then measure the force relative to uh, other material lah. so weaker test so let me put here weaker test weaker test so they use a conical so you can see this conical eh? so when you try to indent this uh, what we call this bit this pyramidal diamond and then you Take it out, you get something like this. Okay, you get something like this. Okay, the bigger the it is, meaning that the less harder it becomes, it is than this stuff. So that is uh, the machine. Lah. It's just simply a machine that is one of the most simplest machine. Lah. Rockwell, Brinell, and Wickers. Okay, you need to understand the difference between Rockwell and Brinell. Rockwell in depth, Brinell in the area. Because mostly the depth or area is, but it's a little bit different lah. Mostly the surface area lah. This is surface area also. Surface area. The higher, the bigger the surface area, the less hard the thing lah. So that's how they test the, what we call, the hardness of something eh. Okay, so that is basically we cover the abrasive we more or less cover the glass a little bit lah a glass the hardness and the abrasive okay so maybe uh, for last i want to a little bit talk about the clay eh? the clay let me uh, erase this thing first so clay and glass is two totally different thing eh? glass is made from the silica clay is mineral lah eh? They may have a silica inside that, but they have a lot more mineral inside clay. <coughs> okay, this thing, eh? this clay. Eh? So unlike metal, plastic and glass, clay cannot be melted. Okay, Clay cannot be melted. Glass you can melt, right? You can see a liquid glass, something hot. Metal you can fire heat fire it hot enough and it is melt plastic you know it's, you can melt but clay you cannot you put the clay when you try to bake the clay for example you make like a pottery you make a pottery you put into the furnace let's say this furnace the purpose of this is not to melt it's to bake it's different eh? when you put a metal plastic for example when you put metal plastic Plastic, plastic, metal, or glass into the furnace. The purpose for that is to melt. To melt. The purpose for this is not to melt, but to bake. Huh? To bake because um, because we cannot because the temperature to what we call to melt the clay is so high, so we don't have a material to contain it. Because in order to make it, you need to contain it somewhere, uh, with something, right? But they don't have, we don't have what we call the material that can hold that thing. Okay? 
So uh, in nature, we have lagma, uh, magma. In nature, you have like a volcano. 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 This volcano. This volcano. 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 And also, you have a magma. Lah. Magma and lava. Magma and lava. So this is basically uh, the temperature that you need to reach in order to melt the clay. So this magma and lava, we can say like a melted clay. Lah. Melted clay. But even though you can take it, take this magma or lava with something, if you try to cool it down, if you try to cool it down, what you get, to cool it down, what you get, something like this, something that is very porous. We call it volcanic rock. Volcanic rock. Volcanic rock. So let me put here. Volcanic rock. Um, <laughs> volcanic rock. You can see a volcanic rock is uh, is full of what we call full of uh, pores and so on. Okay, so it's not the same like the pottery that we used to have lah. Because this volcanic rock is basically the clay that I mean roughly clay that is melted. Okay. So you cool it down, you get something like this. Okay? But we don't have things that can sort of like hold the, the, the lava really well. Lah. So the, the, the idea for making a pottery out of the clay is a little bit different. Lah. That's why when people want to deal with this thing, what we call deal with the pottery or cement, because cement also use some clay. Eh? If we want to deal with the clay, Pottery cement, normally uh, people use a chemical reaction. Chemical reaction rather than using fire. Okay, because they cannot melt the thing. So this is chemical reaction. They, 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 they have some chemical reaction. Uh, how from this you can make a heart is because of chemical reaction. It's not like it's melting. Cement also, you add with water to initiate the chemical reaction. So that is not melting the cement. You, you are basically make a chemical reaction so that uh, you can create something like a stone. That's why in order to make artificial stone, you cannot, people use this uh, chemical reaction rather than using this melting, the, the, the melting part. Lah. For example, this, what we call this? This brick and so on. They don't melt it. They don't melt it. They just use water and make a mold and then they bake it and you get something lah. So how this clay, what we call this clay, what happened to the clay when you bake it? Okay. So this what what in other words, what is the chemical reaction? What is my like what is the chemical reaction that happened during you, the baking? Eh? During the baking. What made this become hard after baking is basically the because is this eh? The clay is made of lot of lot of mineral lah, mineral mineral. Uh, typically alumina, alumina, quartz, and maybe rust, rust also. Okay, so if you have, for example, this, this thing, eh? if you have this alumina, quartz, and rust clay, you will got something like an orange colored uh, substance lah. We call it terracotta. Terracotta. So this is, if the clay consists of this thing, alumina, quartz, and rust, you get something uh, have this color, terracotta color. Terracotta color. Depending on the mineral inside the, so this, so for example, you can see something like this, right? The color like this. So this terracotta color lah. So the color is because of the rust. So it's depending on the what we call on the mineral inside the clay itself. So in this case, if you have clay that contain this alumina, quartz, and rust, you get this terracotta color. If you have something like contain like kaolin, ka kao kao kaolin, ka kao kao ke kaolin, kaolin, you get something that is white lah, whitish, whitish like a porcelain and so on. Eh? 
So what happened when you try to sort of like to bake this thing, this, this mud? What happened is that if you imagine this thing, okay, imagine this thing is a tiny, tiny crystal because all these things, they are like a tiny, tiny crystal inside the mud, inside the clay lah. Tiny, tiny crystal inside the, so imagine this clay. So I draw like the clay here. When you try to bake, huh? when you try to bake, this all tiny crystal so will sort of like aggregate together. Aggregate together. Like this. Okay. The reason why it aggregate like this because inside the clay, there are water. So the first thing that happens when you try to bake the clay is that the water evaporate. H2O evaporate. Okay. H2O evaporate. And all these things, this crystal, let's say I take this crystal. Huh? Let's say I take this one crystal. Huh? This crystal, if you look inside this tiny crystal, there are a lot of items in this crystal. Okay, Crystal is just simply a, a regular arrangement of the atom inside a material. Huh? They have a lot of atom inside this. Okay, So the atom that is on the surface here, on the surface here, this thing on the surface, they have what we call unoccupied electron because in order to this atom bind with this atom, let's say A and B, this thing, the, the what we call the the electron must be sort of like make uh, somewhat the bonding with, with each other. Lah. So the one on the surface, for example, like this, the atom here, this atom on the surface, this part, they have what we call the the because the atom is like this huh? the atom is like this more or less like that okay they have what we call the valence shell on the valence shell the electron is not bind with other thing so it's unstable this thing is unstable unstable so the atom on the outer surface or on the edge is unstable compared to the atom inside the body so because this unstable they have what we call they try to become stable because everything try to become stable so when you try to hit a clay, you give energy. So this thing will jiggling around. So to the point that this unstable atom will sort of like break, what we call break uh, away from this uh, crystal. So when you try to bake a clay, what happened? This thing will try to move to other, the atom here, the, the atom inside this crystal will try to move around and try to become like, uh, what we call, inside the the body. You can jump here and there, you can jump here. The, the, the one that, the, what you call, on the edge, you can jump here and here. Okay, when it's cooled down, when, when, what we call, when you cool down the, the clay, the energy will be uh, lower, and then the jumping will not happen. Lah. So what happened, the atom that is jump, uh, some of it, some of it, will not return back to the original atom, original crystal. Lah. So what will happen is that they create like a bridge. Like a bridge there. Like a bridge. Okay? And because the, they try to sort of like to be inside the, what we call inside the body rather than the outside because the outside is unstable. That's why they clump together. They clump together. And then when they are, there are million of million of bridge, this bridge, there are million or million of bridge uh, occur inside this thing during baking. So when it cool down, it will sort become like the aggregate, and then that's why you get the what we call the the hot uh, pottery lah. And we learned before the pottery uh, is what we call is divided into uh, three. You have under the pottery, you have what we call you have the earthen ware, you have stoneware stoneware and also you have what we call the porcelain eh? porcelain so this under the pottery so all of this they have a similar uh, chemical uh, reaction the, sim the similar chemical reaction is occurring to all these things to make this earthenware stoneware and porcelain the difference between these two is that be between these three is that earthenware normally in order to make this earthenware you need the temperature that is lesser than the rest lah. Normally, for the earthenware, you need the temperature around 1000 Celsius. Stoneware, you need around what we call 
uh, 1, 2, 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, 2, like that. And uh, for porcelain, normally beyond that lah. For porcelain, uh, you need uh, temperature around 1, 4, something lah. 1, 4, 1, into 1, 4, 0, 0, lah. This may be 1, 3 lah. 1, 3, 0, 0, C. So the difference between this lah. The, and also another difference between these three is that the quality of the mineral that they use because the clay made of a lot of mineral and there are many type of mineral so the earthenware low quality and porcelain they have a, a what we call the high quality mineral lah. so that's the difference between the pottery other way is the less durable porcelain in terms of durability so this is the most durable most durable durable and this is the less durable less durable Okay. So that's I think that's it for today. So so we are basically uh, looking a little bit more into the glass and clay product uh, and also the abrasive. We will not cover this refractories, ceramic biomaterial, carbon and advanced ceramic in this ceramic uh, class. Maybe we can. Uh, what we call talk a little bit more about carbon later on but for the refractories and ceramic biomaterial we will not cover it so that's it uh, about the clear